And as you can see, I got 87%, which was 26 out of 30, which was an A star. The pace of the teaching was really fast. I actually really enjoyed Corpio 1. I thought it was quite easy. When we were doing it, it was like, I don't, not that I didn't understand, but I thought, I didn't understand why this works. There was so much to learn and to take in, and a lot of it was in the formula book, so it was about getting the right formulas. I'm going to talk to you about decision maths. I really did not like decision maths. <laughs> and welcome back to a brand new video. Now for today's video, I am going to be taking you through my experience of A-level further maths, what I thought about it, how I felt, everything you need to know about A-level further maths and my experience is in this video. I did do a video for A-level maths, which I will put in a box up here. Basically, I went through my experience in that video and I asked whether you wanted to see one for further maths and a few of you did. I've got, again, my laptop down here, and I've split this video up into, bear with me, five sections. I will put everything timestamped in the description down below so you can skip to a certain section if you want to. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. So just like I did A-level maths, I did A-level further maths in a year. And that was because I did the whole of my A-level maths in my first year and sat my real exam at the end of my first year. And then in my second year, I moved on to further maths and I would have sat my exam at the end of my second year. But of course, coronavirus got in the way. So I just want to put that out there. We did do A-level further maths really, really quickly. The pace of the teaching was really fast. It didn't put me off too much because I kept up with it, but I just want to tell you that I did it in a year. So section one of this video is the course that I did. Now I did the Edexcel exam board. We had four modules. The two modules that we had to do and everybody has to do if you do Edexcel is Corpio 1 and Corpio 2 and they're both pure modules and I like pure so I was okay with those. And then we had two other modules that we had to choose from. We could either do more statistics, more mechanics, more pure, or decision. I think that's all of them. And the two that we chose was FP1, which was more pure maths, further pure, and decision maths, which we'll get onto later on in the video. Decided that as a class and we had a little bit of a dilemma. Some people wanted to do further mechanics, some people wanted to do further pure. So what I did was I did further pure and decision as my option modules. One teacher taught Corpio 1 and Corpio 2, which are the two modules you have to do. And then that same teacher also taught me FP1, which is further pure one, the uh, pure module that we chose to take. And then the second teacher that I had taught or just me decision maths, but they also taught the class mechanics as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Quick summary, I did Copio 1, Copio 2, FP1 and D1. Cool. The second part in this video is why I chose to do further maths and if you're thinking about doing it, why it might be a good idea as well. If you don't know, I have decided to do a maths degree, so further maths was a course that I just definitely was going to think about. I also enjoyed maths and I still do, so choosing further maths and maths was a real bonus because I got to do more maths. And it also is an essential to university, so some people sort of are like, do I really need to do it? For me, like I said, it was just to do more maths. I enjoyed it, I wanted to learn more maths, so it was a subject that I definitely wanted to take. The third part in this video is course content. So, I'm looking down here because I've got my laptop. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is Corpio 1. I actually really enjoyed Corpio 1. I thought it was quite easy and I didn't actually think there was too much of a jump from A-level maths. The only thing I would have to say is that you do the maths and you thought of 
think like, where is all this coming from? Why am I learning this? Because with Corpio 1, what I felt was that you learn the maths, but you're not really told how you can apply it. But with Corpio 1, I didn't really know what to expect because I obviously haven't seen anything in further maths and I haven't done further maths GCSE as well. So I didn't know what the sort of further maths style was like. I did feel like the chapters were a little bit similar. So I'll put on screen here the book that we did. It was the Ed Excel book. And I sort of felt as though chapter one with complex numbers and chapter four, which was roots of polynomials linked together. And obviously we did chapter one first, we did them all in order. So we learned the complex numbers. And then when we went to chapter four, I was like, oh, this is okay. I can apply this here. I've sort of seen this before. And chapter one was sort of put into context. My favourite topic from CP1 or Corpio 1 was proof by induction. When we were doing it, it was like, I don't, not that I didn't understand, but I thought I didn't understand why this works. To go from a statement and then proving it really, really nicely to get into a nice answer. And the answer that you write at the end is always the same. So it was just sort of following a step and learning it. And that's why I liked it. My easiest topic from CP1 was definitely volumes of revolution. It was literally just integrating with pi out the front. Was it with pi out the front? I've not done math for so long that I actually can't remember. It is with a pi out the front. Do you square it? Oh, I'm not sure. Now I'm saying that, I can't remember. But when I was doing further maths, it was the easiest. My hardest topic from CP1 was definitely vectors. There was so much to learn and to take in and a lot of it was in the formula book. So it was about getting the right formulas. And vectors isn't something that goes in my brain quite easily. I do have to do more work than other topics, which I'm fine with, but vectors definitely took me a little bit longer to get used to than the other topics. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the side and I'm going to put on screen here some of my tests that I did. Here is mini test one, and that was in October. So that was just a month after we'd started further maths. So this test was a Corpio 1 test. And as you can see, I got 87%, which was 26 out of 30, which was an A star. So that was quite good. Then the second mini test that I did was in November, and I got 63%, which was 19 out of 30, which was a little bit lower than mini test one because this was a grade B, but I was still pleased with it because I was only just getting used to further maths and sort of the style of their questions and the keywords that are in their questions. So uh, I was pleased with those. And those mini tests were just class tests that we did with our teacher. Then key assessment one was actually a week later than mini test two. And key assessment one was what they had to report on the system. And I think this was a mock. It might have been in the classroom, I can't remember, but the key assessments are more official than the mini tests. And I actually got a grade C. I got 58%, which was 35 out of 60, which is okay. It's not the best. But like I said, I was only just starting further maths and getting used to it. So I was still pleased with a grade C. Now let's move on to CP2, which is Corpio 2. To be honest, it wasn't too much different to Corpio 1. The chapters were quite similar. There was a new chapter here and there, but there wasn't too many. And because we were doing it in a year, it didn't take us that long to learn. There was quite a lot more work, but like I said, it built on Corpio 1. If I had to choose a favourite topic from Corpio 2, it would have to be differential equations. So many of you know that they're my favourite or one of my favourite topics in pure maths. I just find them really nice questions. I think they're quite satisfying to do. Uh, yes, I did just say that. That would be my favourite. If I had to say an easiest topic, it would probably be again volumes of revolution because you didn't learn anything new that you didn't know in Corpio 1. The only thing you learned was how to do it parametrically. My hardest part of Corpio 2 was definitely polar coordinates. Still to this day, I don't think I understand polar coordinates, but that would be my hardest topic. Now again, I'm going to show you some exam results. I only have one official exam on the system because that was all that was put on. It was key assessment two and it was done in January. And I actually got an A. I got 67 out of 100, which was of course 
then. So I was pleased with that. We did do more exams, but they're not on the system for some reason. So that's the only one that I have to show you. Now I'm going to talk about my two chosen modules. The first one, I'm going to talk to you about decision maths. I really did not like decision maths. I think that's okay because it was completely different to anything I'd ever done before. I'm up for a challenge. I like learning new things, but decision maths just, we didn't vibe at all. Decision maths is all about algorithms and how computers work and how computers do things quickly using algorithms. My teacher said to me, you are now computers, you're not human beings, you are a computer. Because what we had to do was do algorithms that computers do. For example, chapter one was all about algorithms and how to sort numbers quickly. I can do this in my head. Now I probably sound really, really stupid because I should like this because I want to do maths, but I love pure maths. I just really don't like decision maths. And I think that's fine. It is hard for me to say my favorite topic, um, but I've written down here simplex algorithm. I liked it when I could do it, but to me, I just found it a bit boring. I'm not gonna lie. My easiest topic would probably be algorithms, just ordering numbers, because that's really all you have to do in chapter one. My hardest topic in decision maths was anything else that I've not mentioned, because I found it hard. Now I'm gonna show you some exam results. So I have three exams. The first exam was like official exam that I did with my teacher, which was key assessment two, but I got 52%, which was a B. And then we had a mini test, which we just did in class. And oh dear, we did this in February and I got 13 out of 35, which was 37%, which was a D. Now that seems really, really bad, but it, I haven't done any of this maths ever before. So I'm not gonna get an A star straight away. So people did, but I just, I didn't vibe with decision maths. Is that the right word? I don't know. Then we had an official mock, which was in March, and we did those in the hall, like a, you know, just like a real exam. And I got 37 out of 75, which was 49%, which was an improvement. I did better, still wasn't great. It was still a great D, but I was proud of myself because I was improving. And you know, it just took me a little bit longer. That's all we're gonna say about decision maths. If you've got any questions about it, please let me know in the comments and I'll answer them. Overall, it just wasn't for me, but that's fine. However, FP1 was the second chosen module that we did, and I loved this. I love pure maths, so it was just, you know, the perfect module for me. I really, really enjoyed it. It was overall really great. We started with conic sections. We jumped to chapter two because my teacher didn't want to teach us chapter one first. Chapter two and chapter three actually were conic sections. Chapter two was quite easy. There was just a lot to remember, but a lot of it was in the form formula book, so it was just applying it to questions. And then chapter three was just a build on chapter two. If I had to say my favorite topic, again, it would be differential equations. Coronavirus appeared when we were learning FP1. So we only learn about three quarters of the course in class and then we went into lockdown. So we, were, we weren't actually taught anything online. We were just sent some notes that we had to copy up and we had to do some questions at home. But I taught myself reducible differential equations. So that was my favorite part of the maths. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you, because I learned it at home, because we were in lockdown, I've kind of forgotten it. I feel like if I was to do a question, I would have to look at some notes and I would still have a little bit of the knowledge. So we might, before we go to university, have to go over that again, but I'm up for that. My easiest topic in FP1 was without a doubt inequalities and maybe T formula as well, but inequalities, we just didn't learn anything new. It was chapter four, I think, in the Excel book, and it was just so easy. There was only one new thing that we learned in the whole chapter. And I think we did the chapter in about a day. That was definitely the easiest. I actually don't think I had, from what I learned, I had a really, really hard chapter. Like I said, we didn't do chapter one and chapter one was vectors. So I think if we were to have done chapter one, if lockdown didn't happen, then chapter one would have been a little bit harder for me because it was vectors and I had to work a little bit harder with corpior two vectors. But I don't know because we didn't end up doing it. Overall, FP1 was probably my favorite module out of the four. Section four in this video is exams. Now, of course, because we went into lockdown, I didn't do my official exams, but I thought I would just address exams in case anybody's watching 
watching this and wondering how the exams work and want to know a little bit more. So for the Edexcel course, what I would have done is I would have sat four exams. Paper one and paper two would have been a mixture of anything from Corpio one and Corpio two. And then paper three would have been anything from further pure one and paper four would have been anything from decision. I was okay with CP1 and CP2 so paper one and paper two would have probably been okay for me. Paper three maybe would have been a little bit harder because we didn't have too long to learn the FP1 stuff and decision maths well I've just explained decision maths to you. It was the last exam I think it was the 17th of June that I would have sat decision maths so I did have the longest time and I might have got better with decision maths fingers crossed I would have done. If exams were to have gone ahead I would have put decision maths as my number one priority because it was the obviously the maths that I didn't do too well at. I actually think having four exams is good because I didn't know how decision maths was going to go. In my mind I was thinking it's okay because I've got paper one, paper two and paper three which are pure modules that would have helped me get my grade up. But like I said I never actually sat the exams because of lockdown. I just wanted to include an exam section so you knew what I would have done. Section five in this video. That was really high pitched and really loud. I apologise. Section five is my overall opinion. I would 100% recommend further maths to anybody thinking of doing a maths related degree, engineering, physics degree, anything like that, further maths is perfect for. I'm going crazy because it's quarter to 10 and I really want to go to bed. I've written down here as well, which I think I've said, I enjoyed the pure modules. The decision part was just a little bit harder for me, a little bit more boring, but maybe you like it. I don't want to put you off. There is a lot of work to do in further maths. And I'm going to be honest, there's a lot more work in further maths than normal A-level maths. But I'm up for a challenge. I like to work, so I wasn't too bothered by the workload. And for me, because I did further maths in a year, the teaching pace was quite quick. Quick, but I was okay with that because I was used to doing my A-level maths in a year anyway. So there we go, that was today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know your opinion on A-level further maths. Did you do the modules that I did? Let me know. Make sure to follow me over on my Instagram and other social medias to keep up to date and subscribe because it's, it's cool to be kind. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you very, very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye!